We've talked about precision and accuracy, and you can now begin to recognize sources of random and systematic error in your experiments. But when you take a measurement, or when you look at someone else's, how do you show the level of accuracy in the measurements? There are several ways. Here, we'll look at the concept of significant figures, which will feature prominently in your work. Significant figures tell you about measurement error. Imagine you have a 50 gram mass. The value printed on the mass is 50g, 50 grams. But are you sure that's exactly 50 grams? It could be 46 grams and they've just rounded it up to 50. In fact, it could be anywhere between 45 and 54 grams. Any of these values would round to 50 grams. So that measurement value has some uncertainty associated with it. Let's say it were printed 51 grams. This tells us something more. Now it can't be 46 anymore because you can't round 46 to 51. But it could be between 50.5 and 51.4. That's at least tightened up the accuracy of our measurement. We now have a smaller range of error. OK, what if it were labeled 51.0 grams? This reduces the range of error even more. Now we know it's between 50.95 and 51.04 grams. And it's because that extra zero is specified after the decimal point. That zero says, we measured this thing accurately enough to be sure that however you measure its mass, it's going to round to 51.0 grams. It might be 51.0398561 grams. It might be 50.999999 grams. But whatever it is, it's going to round to 51.0. OK, so the difference between those three values for the mass, 50 grams, 51 grams, and 51.0 grams, was the number of digits for which we were sure of the value. This is the basis of significant figures. Note that if we had absolutely no measurement error, then we could write the mass to an infinite number of decimal places. Exactly 51 grams would be written like that. So I'm going to give you the rules for determining how many significant figures a number has, and then I'm going to show you how they work. Here are the rules. Make sure you have a copy of these in front of you when you move on through this video. It'll help you to understand the examples. First rule. All non-zero digits are significant. In the number 23, you have two non-zero digits, 2 and 3. Clearly, both of those digits have been measured. So this number has two significant figures. Second, all captive zeros are significant. Captive means zeros that are between other non-zero digits. So in 203 and in 4.089, the zeros are captive. They're between non-zero digits. So both they and the non-zero digits count. Hence, 203 has three significant figures, and 4.089 has four significant figures. Third rule, leading zeros are never significant. A leading zero is a zero at the front of a number. This could be either a zero in front of a whole number, like in a big digital display that counts upwards, or it could be the zero in front of a decimal number less than one. Either way, the function of these zeros is only as placeholders. They tell you nothing about the accuracy of the number. So 800807, which is 807, has three significant figures, and 0 0.53 has two significant figures. Fourth rule is to do with trailing zeros, but there are two possibilities here. In numbers where there is a decimal point, trailing zeros are significant. This is because if a decimal point has been specified, then we know that all of those digits have actually been measured. If they hadn't, they wouldn't even be written down. So 160.00 has five significant figures because all of those zeros were actually measured. And 0 0.9140 has four significant figures. Remember, the leading one is not significant. However, in numbers that have no decimal point, trailing zeros could mean that the number has just been rounded off. So they're ambiguous, and we treat them as non-significant. So 3,500 we treat as having only two sig figs. Let's do some examples. Pause the video and try these for yourself. How many sig figs are in each of these numbers? OK. 
This starts with a non-zero digit, the 1, and goes on from there. The only zero in it is a captive zero, which we know is significant. So this number has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sig figs. OK, 45,000. This number starts with two significant figures, the 4 and the 5, but these are followed by three trailing zeros. Since there's no decimal point in this number, they're non-significant, because we don't know if those zeros are exact or the result of rounding off. So this number just has two sig figs. 0 0.020. This number starts with two leading zeros, which are not significant. We start counting when we get to the first non-zero digit, that's the 2. And the trailing zero is significant this time, because the number has a decimal point. So two sig figs here. 0 0.009050. This is much like the last one. Start counting the sig figs at the 9, which is the first non-zero digit, and that gives us four sig figs in total. OK, last example. This number is written in scientific notation rather than standard notation. So let's rewrite it in standard notation. It equals 0 0.0415. Uh, and you should be able to see now that it has three sig figs, because the first two zeros aren't significant. Now, look back at the scientific notation. Notice that when the number is written as 4.15 times 10 to the minus 2, those three significant figures are placed in obvious fashion at the start of the number. The non-significant zeros are hidden. Instead of having them there as placeholders, we're using the times 10 to the minus 2 part to give the digits their correct place value instead. And this leads me to a useful tip. If you're ever in doubt about sig figs, convert to scientific notation. Scientific notation gets rid of non-significant digits. The first part of the number shows you all the sig figs, and the second part just adjusts the place values. This also gives us a strategy for dealing with the ambiguity in numbers like 45,000. What if we actually want to write 45,000 to 5 sig figs? That is, we want to show that the 45,000 was measured accurately to the nearest whole number. Well, if we write it in scientific notation, we can show that those zeros are significant by including them in the first part of the notation. When written like this, the trailing zeros become part of a number with a decimal point, and so we know for sure that they are significant. So brush up on your scientific notation. Now, I'm just going to revisit this example for a second because there's a potential misunderstanding here that I want to clear up. Just because the leading zeros are not significant doesn't mean they disappear. 0 0.020 is not the same as 20. You can't get rid of those first two zeros. The function of those first two zeros is as placeholders for the place value. They say there are no ones and there are no tenths. The actual useful part of the measurement starts at the two in the hundredths place and goes on with the final zero. These are the digits that tell us the size of the number. But if we don't have those first two zeros, then the two would have the wrong place value, and that would muck everything up.